Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is September 28th, 2022. <laughs> Better known as Losing Wednesday. <laughs> uh, we did not get a chance to do a podcast. This is the earliest we've been able to get to it. I'm telling you, man, you would think, you know, this, this is the last we're going to talk about the moving to. Okay. That's it. Awesome. But you would think moving would not be such a long, drawn-out <laughs> process. You know, you just move stuff from one place to another, and then you're done. That's not how it works. Mm-hmm. We had to go back up to Virginia, uh, do some cleaning, get the rest of our stuff, come back down here. <clears throat> and uh, we were exhausted. We watched the game Sunday. We got back and had everything unloaded, put in the garage, and then we were done. We were just like, I, I can't. <laughs> it's been a whole weekend of moving and cleaning. So, Zombies. We like couldn't move. Yeah. We were so stiff. <laughs> so we're sitting there watching this game. The Buccaneers look tired and stiff, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, it, I, I get it, guys. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't play right now. It's like we to. just played two NFL games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, at first I was like, man, you know, is it just, it must be me. See, they just seem blah because I feel blah. They did. Yes, but on second watch, no. It was I had, just you. I had You're more projecting. energy. <laughs> you have more energy. <laughs> yeah. ah. Well, we're not going undefeated this year. Only. Two, three teams are undefeated right now. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Buffalo Bills, and who else is the other team? Is that Miami? It might be Miami. Yeah, because only only the Eagles are the only NFC team that's okay. undefeated. I think it's Miami. Yeah. But you know what? I just don't even care about this stat. No, oh, no, no. Like at I don't. All. I mean, when your team is three and zero, you do care. Mm-hmm. But when they're mm-hmm. not, you're like, whatever. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah. All that matters is the playoffs. <laughs> uh, well, you know, and it, and it's it's weird. I can't remember a season where we haven't had undefeated teams this late into the or this mm-hmm. early into the start of the year. But it's also scoring. Scoring is low across the board. I mean, they. The average isn't even 21 points. When you have the Miami Dolphins, like, putting up 40 points, and that's impressive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a low bar for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not just the Buccaneers not scoring points. It's the whole league. Like I said, uh, the, the league average right now is 20.3 points per game. That is low. It's the lowest it's been in almost 15 years. 2009. I just, right off the top of my head, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, are they focusing on running, or is it just good defense? Don't know. Don't know. Everyone sucks. It's the COVID class that just came in. See, see. They're not very good. But I thought we thought that was going to affect the tackling and the defense, but it's just going to affect everything. I guess. Everything, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of sloppy, ugly play across the league, and you know I had talked about that after week two that. You know, we, we did look like one of the better teams just because we weren't screwing up like everybody else. You know, we were just uh, playing pretty decent football. Not not thrilling and exciting except for our defense. But the it just seems like the rest of the league is just sloppy football. Well, this weekend against the Buccaneers or the Packers, we got to experience a little bit of that sloppy <laughs> football. Uh, but it wasn't just us. Packers played sloppy. It was an ugly game. Yeah. It was an ugly game. Yeah. Well, and I'm not mad about losing to the Packers. Like, I felt like we've had their number the last couple of years, and I did want to continue that. And especially with Aaron Rodgers, like, he gets kind of pissy. <laughs> and I enjoy seeing that. Um, <clears throat> he's just easy to antagonize, it feels like. Yeah. But, I mean, this is a playoff team. They're a playoff team. We're probably going to see them again in the playoffs. Maybe we don't face them, but... They're up there. Um, so it was always going to be a competitive game, and I would have liked to see the Buccaneers be a little more competitive, but at the end of the day, the score was still 14-12. Uh-huh. I mean, we were right there till the last minute. Yes, and, and we almost won, or we almost tied it anyhow. I mean, we were coming up pretty strong there towards the end. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the game, 
uh, you know, they were able to score the two touchdowns, and that was just hard to overcome. It was a low-scoring affair, but I was impressed that we were able to come back. Now, a lot of people have complained about our wide receivers, lack of production from them, Mm -hmm. and rightfully so. Uh, Our running game didn't do a whole lot against the Packers, although we stuffed their running game, basically. We kept them under three yards per carry. Uh, And, you know, people talked about the penalties and all that good stuff. But the one thing that really stood out to me in this game, and it was the reason why I think we lost, because you could see as as close as the game was, it was little things that mattered, but it was field position. I mean, we had on on the uh, on the punts and kickoffs and stuff. I mean, we just got slaughtered. We had eleven of twelve of our starting field positions were at or below the twenty-five yard line. Mm-hmm. Uh, six were under the twenty. And five of those were under the 15. We had one was at the two. Oh, my God. Line. I hate those ones. Yeah. Now, that was, wasn't that a turnover? Was that from a turnover? No. No, that's what they, it was, it, I think it was a punt, and they stopped it right oh, at the God, those make line. me so nervous. Yeah. And then, especially when he's throwing. <laughs> Brady was throwing to oh the outside. God, I was like, why? what are you doing? Yes. Uh, so we had one, we started at our two-yard line. Two, we started at our 11-yard line. Uh, one was at the 13, and another one was at the 14. I mean, just absolutely horrible field position. And even at the last drive, we started at our 11. So, you know, we went 89 yards Mm -hmm. to get that touchdown to try and tie it up. Uh, Now, in contrast, the Packers only had one of their starts under the 14-yard line or the 15-yard line, and the rest were above the 25. Uh, Their average field position was at their 32. Ours was at our 20. Wow. So that's, that's a huge difference, huge difference. And when you're talking about uh, 12 different starting positions and you've got a 12-yard advantage every single time, yeah. th- that's that's over 100 yards difference mm-hmm. in field position. Mm-hmm. So to me, that, that was what really stood out to me in the game. We just couldn't overcome you know, that huge deficit in field position. Uh, and, uh, you know, we could... It is, our third down conversions just weren't that good. I think oh. we were two for 11 or something mm-hmm. like that. It was terrible. Yeah, they were at 40%, which well, it isn't great. Yeah. Uh, we did pretty good holding them, but then ours was just crap. You know, we had 18% on third down conversion, two for 11. That's horrible. But, you know, I mean, Brady was throwing the ball, and he, you know, he was pretty accurate. He did make some mistakes, <clears throat> one being the the uh, – the, Delay of game penalty at the end, the two point conversion. That was just weird. Uh, but then, you know, he was he, he, he was getting. Uh, I think at the beginning of the game, both him and Aaron Rodgers had a really long streak of co- consecutive passes where you know they didn't have any incompletions up until like almost the second quarter. Uh, but the the Packers had the ball for seven minutes longer than we did. Mm, so that's you know, big. yeah, and in that hot sun, the defense. You know, getting mm. tired and sweaty. Well, I would say to counter that point is that they scored early and then we held them the rest of the game. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, our defense really stepped up. Mm-hmm. You know, after we got that Vita Vea fumble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bitch about that all the time, how, you know, we drop him back into coverage. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, but I never thought about that. When he tackles you. Yeah. <laughs> It hurts. <laughs> if he gets the shot And on you're it. getting these, like, 200-pound receivers getting yeah. hit by this, what is he, 350? He's big. I mean, Yeah, and he hurts. got it right in the back. I did not know that no. was coming. And just coughed the ball up right yeah. on the goal line. Well, he saw Levante coming. Yeah, he's he like, had, I, He could race for Levante. I'll take Levante. Mm-mm. Didn't see the big boy wave coming. <laughs> uh, so that was good. You know, and it seems like, I've seen the media talking about how our our defense is playing all these unusual things. We've been doing that ever since he's been here. Mm-hmm. You know, if you listen to the podcast, mm-hmm. you know I pointed out. You know, we drop Sue Vita, mm-hmm. all these guys back into coverage. We play. We have probably the most complex defense in the league. We have since Bowles has been here. But we don't have a standard anything. We don't play cover one, cover three, cover two. You know, we we just do everything. And you never know what it's going to be until, hell, even after the snap, a lot of times I can't tell what they're doing. 
it's just a very complex defense. And now it seems like people are starting to point this out. Oh, yeah. You know, like it's some revelation. Like yeah, like we're we're changing things up. No, <laughs> okay. this is the exact same stuff we've been doing. The only thing I could say that we're doing different is we're rotating our line a lot more. Oh. Uh, Vita has only gotten he hasn't even gotten seventy percent of the snaps in, in any game this year. Mm. Uh, he was right around sixty percent against uh, the Saints. He was at sixty three percent in this game. Uh, we're really. Uh, resting our defensive line a lot. So, Which I don't mind that with the longer season and right. then if you're anticipating playoffs, I think that's smart to do. Yes. Yes. And it works. Although, Vita's probably, again, probably been my biggest disappointment this year so far. He just doesn't seem to be getting that pressure up the middle. No. Now, yeah, our interior line yeah. is not what it was. Which is unfortunate. I'm not going to say Sue, but... It's probably Sue. It's, <laughs> the guy's a rock. I know. It is so crazy to me I that just... he has not signed anywhere, that nobody's picked him up. We should have picked him up when Akeem Hicks got hurt. No. Oh. <laughs> Molly has ranted for two weeks about Akeem Hicks. Why did we sign? I don't <laughs> understand. He is what we thought he was. <laughs> yeah, we got a game and a half of. Uh, I know, out of him. Production out of him. And he's got a plantar fascia <clears> in his <throat> foot. So he's going to be out at least another three more games. And, man, Molly, you you were so angry about that. It's just like you were with O.J. Howard, man. You disliked him mainly because of all the injuries and stuff. But you just don't like it when guys do this. No. Yeah. I don't blame you. I'm almost as mad at Scotty Miller. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he's the new OJ. Scotty I'm very frustrated with him. He makes me so mad. Uh, ah. I'm yeah. hoping, I love the Cole Beasley signing, and I'm hoping that becomes Tom Brady's little receiver that he likes, he likes over the middle. Yeah. Could so. be. Yeah, because it ain't going to be Scotty Miller. No, it's, uh, and I think they've tried so hard for it to be Scotty Miller. It's not. Yeah, he, he's, he's really regressed this year. I mean, last year way. he was fine. This year, I don't know if he's getting in his own head. You know, he didn't have a great preseason. He was on the bubble. Uh, so did that affect him? I don't know. But it's just, you know, you can't rely on him. Not at all. He's, and I will say with our three top receivers out this week, the receiving core was definitely in this game a liability. Mm -hmm. I thought, um, you know, you had two turnovers by the receivers, Perriman and Russell Gage. They did redeem themselves, I thought, overall for yeah. the game, but I mean, two turnovers. And then. Now, now, with those two turnovers, it wasn't really their fault. It wasn't like they caught it and then just. You know, coughed it up out of nowhere. Those Packers went yeah. for the ball. They punched that, them out. Yeah, that Packer defense was really physical, mm -hmm. and I thought it played really well. So I think that's kind of a difference that we didn't see last year and the year before when we matched up with them. I think their defense is a lot better this year. Mm -hmm. um, and their offense, I thought, was more effective um, than they have been against us in the last couple of years. Yes, and... and you know, you, you brought up the receiving core, and we have – our offense is designed it, – it, it's not spectacular. It's not – you know, you're not looking at a, a dirt cutter offense where he schemes guys open. Uh, our <laughs> offense is really designed it's, – it's very bland, and I, I would say it's it, – from what I've seen this year, it's, it's actually regressed as far as routes is concerned. Mm. And it seems like we have really crafted our offense, the routes and stuff, to be a lot of physical receivers winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. Mm -hmm. And we don't have those guys out there right now mm -hmm. because you got Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans. Those three are the best in the league <laughs> at being physical and win you yeah. know, jump balls. And uh, we don't have them in there, no. so we're we're using Perriman, who's not a physical receiver, Scotty Miller, who's absolutely horrible at the physical aspect mm -hmm. of the game, uh, and then Russell Gage, who you know he had a pretty good, mm -hmm. pretty good day, but uh, you know he, he's not known as mm -hmm. 
being a very physical receiver. <laughs> and then so, you had Jalen Darden, too. So yeah. we had Jalen and Scotty Miller, who are our speed guys. Right, right. Which we don't have. Our offense is not set up for yeah. that. You know, and so we're running. I I was really expecting to see us do more down the field using the speed routes, (coughs) but we didn't. It was like Scotty Miller. We had him doing a lot of post routes, and he was uh, doing comeback routes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's just not Scotty Miller's forte. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he was really, he's really fast. And when he spins around and catches that ball, he catches guys off guard. Uh, he creates distance just by stopping and turning, you know, and staying mm-hmm. still. <laughs> but he can't catch the ball without getting clobbered mm-hmm. and have the ball fly out of his hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not Mike Evans and those guys. Uh, so we didn't adjust our offense, I felt, uh, to compensate for the uh, speed guys. <laughs> yeah, our offense, watching the All-22 against uh, the Saints, it's the only All-22 I've been able to watch, very bland. I mean, very... It didn't put you to sleep. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh man, this, these routes are boring. You know, we're not doing anything special, and not a whole lot of tricky plays that I like. You know, so I had to drink some water. <laughs> Hydrate. Going, yeah. Still, still, this is the tail end of my my illness here. Mm-hmm. So you'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> it's actually the best day I've felt so far. Since I've gotten sick. So as you know, Mike Evans was suspended this game uh, for the <laughs> little kerfuffle against uh, Marshawn Lattimore. <laughs> but you know, <coughs> Marshawn Lattimore did that exact same thing against Atlanta the week before. He clobbered a guy after the whistle and just decleated him. Guy wasn't looking. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore is a dirty player. Yeah. We've, we've dealt with him for many years. Uh, but nothing happened to Marshawn Lattimore. You know, and I, again, you know, the way the, the the refs, there's too mm-hmm. many rules, there's too much babysitting they got to do, and stuff like that. Uh, not having Mike Evans was the difference in this game. If we would have had Mike Evans, we would have won this game. I agree. I think. Because it, it, we were that close to winning this game. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, I think mm-hmm. the liability was really our receiving <laughs> core. Yeah. And, again... Going into the season, we're like, man, we have the best wide receiving core in and, the and league, here. and you can't get them on the field Mm-mm. all at the same time. Yeah, very frustrating. Yeah, last year it was the cornerbacks. The year before that, it was the linebackers. You know, we were talking about uh, <clears throat> when we got Devin White and, and, and uh, Devontae David and all that. We were like, man, we got the best linebacker <laughs> core in the world, and then they all got hurt. You know, and yeah. it was like we were we were having to pull in free agents to right. fill in. Yeah. Uh, and then last year it was the the, sec, the whole secondary that happened. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talk going into the season talking about man, our secondary is really awesome. This year it was the wide receivers. We're like, man, we got the best wide receiving core in the league by far, yeah. and they haven't even been on the field yet. But it <laughs> happened with the receivers last year too, because you had mm. um, Mike Evans had the hamstring. Chris Godwin with the ACL, and then Antonio Brown with his shenanigans. Yeah, that's you right. know, yeah. it was just, it's a habit. I don't know if it's a habit. I don't know. You just never know. Um, and that's a weird thing. I mean, here you are. If anybody benefits from Tom Brady being the quarterback, it's wide receivers. And you think these guys would be busting their butts to get out on the field. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with the uh, secondary, the mm-hmm. second string guys, Scotty Miller, Perriman, all these guys, that they would be doing everything they can. I think it's a lot of pressure. For guys. Take us the pressure. You don't want Tom Brady to be mad at you. And some people can't handle that. Yeah. He's the goat. Do you want the goat to yell at you? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a grown nah. man, but you don't want to get yelled at by Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Bruce Arians got a warning letter last week for his Bruce, conduct. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a there was all kinds of confusion as to why he and Jason Light were on the field. Some people were saying that the Saints didn't give them seats, but then the the, the Saints uh, media was saying that they had press booths, and then the the Buccaneers they guys were saying they didn't want to be in there right, with the media. They, exactly. Do any of us want to be in there with the media? <laughs> well, even the Buccaneers media was saying they don't want to be in there with us. No. that'd be horrible. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, they didn't even have <coughs> a box for them. <laughs> so we're not really sure what happened with the whole Bruce Arians, why him and Jason Light were on the sideline harassing players. <laughs> but I'm not mad about Who it. Who cares? I know, it's great. You know, we don't need to explain. Arthur Blake is on the sideline every freaking game for the Falcons. He's not out there yelling at the opposing team and causing fights. <laughs> That's because he looks like a movie villain. He's like, nice. no one wants to be around him. Ain't nobody talking to him. Nobody. So, <clears throat> don't know if we'll see Bruce Arians on the sideline anymore this year. You know, <laughs> and again, I miss Bruce Arians' press conferences so bad. Nothing against Todd Bowles. Knew this was coming. Expected it. It's kind of like Lovey Smith. You know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, they just almost like they have a disdain for the media, whereas Arians really kind of embrace the media. Uh, Todd Bowles' press conferences are just so, <laughs> oh, they're a struggle to get through. Uh, although he did say about the running backs, you know, if you notice, it's been all of Leonard Fournette. Yeah. White got a couple of uh, carries in the, in week one. Uh, we have not seen uh, 21. Uh, Vaughn. Vaughn at Vaughn. all. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was in there for a couple plays, pass catcher or something. Uh, but, you know, he's not carrying the ball. Mm -hmm. um, Gio Bernard, he's on IR. Gio Bernard, yeah, he's gone. So, Again, another one. Another one, yeah. So it's been the Leonard Fournette show, and he was asked about that. Todd Bowles was in his press conference, and he said they're just going to have to bite the bullet and put some of the other guys in. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. They... We're going to have to settle for the ones who yeah. suck. <laughs> I was like, ooh. But, I mean, Leonard Fournette is really. You can't. I mean, to me, there's no contest. No, I mean, it's no. Fournette and then the rest of them down here. And, and it, it's not so much as running as much as it is, which is running is better than all of them. But uh, it's his, his blocking and his pass catching is just, you know, head and shoulders above everybody. Uh, although, I will say about his running this year, you know, one of the things that I really like about Leonard Fournette is his patience. And he always runs exactly where he's supposed to run mm -hmm. based on the cues and keys. Uh, he's kind of gotten away from that this year. He's, he's, it's almost like he's having fun with it. He just wants to plow guys over. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, he's actually, like, picking guys out and running at them. <laughs> Remember, we had a problem with our running backs a few years ago where they were doing that on a consistent basis. They were running at players. Yeah, uh, of Peyton Barber liked to do it. Yeah. Um, and Rojo. Yes. Well, Fournette's gotten that in his blood this year, and he's going after guys. And he's he's caught with quite a few of them. Who was it? Uh, uh, Matthau, the Honey Badger. He steamrolled oh, him, man. That yeah. was great. Just clobbering. Well, him. and I think with, was it Micah Parsons who was complaining about it? Uh, we blockers. won. Yeah. So then I think Fournette's like, it's just giving him a chip on his shoulder. And yeah. he's like, well, I'm gonna, if I'm going to have a reputation, yeah. I'm just going to he, did, he, go he just for it. He, he seems like he would just wants to be a lot more physical this year. And he seems to be having a lot of fun with it. So yeah. Anyway. Although we are not doing too great running as far as yards per carry. Uh, you know, the first week, we, we killed it. Second week, man, against Green Bay, we didn't do that great. Uh, but we're down at the bottom of the league as far as yards per carry. I think we're at like 3.4. Mm -hmm. And It was not great this game. It was only like 2.4, I think. No. Uh, yeah, but we kept them. Down too. Yeah. I was worried at the beginning of the game that they they picked up some good yardage on us, but then the rest of the game we, we kept them down. Uh, but Fournette has been in there for ninety one percent of the snaps so far this year. I mean that's incredible. That's a that's a workhorse running back. Right? Yeah. Well, so B A does not like the workhorse running back. No. He likes running back by committee. I think Byron now and probably Tom Brady have more license to mm. um, go where they want to with the offense. I think Lenny has ingratiated himself with Tom Brady. He's reliable. Tom knows he can count on him. And so I do think that he's earned that, you know, yeah. If, yeah. if he wants it. Uh, you know, that's the thing about the running game is, you know, you don't, necessarily have to get big yardage or consistent yardage or anything. It's just doing it. 
you know, just doing it, it hurts the defense and it pulls everybody in and you know, it's it's a mental game. It's mm-hmm. a, the real mental. And, it, and to me, I think it helps out the offensive line a lot, especially if we got the you know the new middle of the offensive line. They really need as much help as they can get. They can't be pass blocking all the time. Yeah. You know, because they're going to screw up and they're going to get Tom Brady sacked and all that good well, stuff. Well, he his knee brace got all messed up in this one. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, well, that was because he was running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did some running in this game. That was so sad. That one got called back on. I was so mad about that. Yeah. I was like, dang, you just, the GOAT, this is probably his best run he's going to have all season. (laughs) Y'all ruined it. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, we are middle in the league in rushing right now. We have 103 pass attempts to 77 rush attempts, uh, which for us, that's very good. Uh, (laughs) We are at the bottom of the league with 3.4 yards per rush. We're tied with the Rams at that. There's only. Three other teams, three teams worse than us. It's the Chargers, Bengals, and Dolphins. Uh, we are tied for second worst in offensive scoring. We've only got four touchdowns this year on our offense. Uh, highest of the Ravens with 14. Wow. <laughs> and the lowest is the Broncos with three. That's not going to matter if our defense can hold teams yeah. to not very many well, It's points. such a difference between the past couple of years. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we, we've been the league's highest scoring offense for so long. I mean, we've been popping off 35, 40 points a game mm-hmm. on a regular. Mm-hmm. And now we're at the bottom. Of the, we all know that's not going to stay. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is not a, it's not, it's not the norm. Mm-hmm. You know, things will start clicking and we're going to start popping off and if our defense can keep playing good mm-hmm. woo! Mm-hmm. Uh, our, speaking of our defense you know we have not allowed a rushing touchdown yet this year oh all we're, right we're a few teams in the league for that uh we're eighth best in the league in run defense we're only allowed 3.8 yards per carry and uh we're seventh in the league in passing believe it or not huh. yeah. i do believe it yeah that's just that just goes to show how bad the rest of the league is <laughs> Uh, we do lead the league in scoring defense. We I've only we only allow nine points per game. That's good. Yeah, uh, we're tied with the Jaguars and the Ravens for first in takeaways with eight takeaways. Uh-huh. Their goal is thirty, I think. So they said. I think so. Thirty-two, maybe yeah. thirty. Uh, Tom Brady's been sacked six times, which is league average. Uh, the highest is Joe Burrow and Carson Wentz, tied at fifteen. Oh, my God, they spent all that money in Cincinnati on an offensive line, including Kappa. Yep, Alex Kappa's over there. Uh, which I had heard, he, that was the biggest free agency robbery. He was our weak link here, man. I mean, he wasn't horrible, but yeah, he was the weakest. Uh, the lowest in sacks is Jacoby Brissett with the Browns, surprisingly. Really? With four, man. Huh. So our, our offensive line is doing okay. Uh, watching the All-22, uh, Gedeke, again, he's kind of like Kappa, weakest link. He, he's not like Kappa in his play. With Gedeke, it's not, he's not really getting beat. He's just making mistakes. He's a little too, uh, well, I don't want to say dumb, because uh, you know, that's kind of I think it's the thing. inexperience. Yeah, it's inexperience. Uh, he, he's kind of trying a little too hard at times. Uh, he's missing blocks totally because he's, you know, he's not following commander's intent. You know, I mean, he's he's going to where he's supposed to go, but he's letting the guy in between, mm-hmm. you know, like he'll actually go around Like he's guys. technically correct with yeah. what he does, but right. like not the best decision. Right, right. Like he's, you need yeah. to be able to adjust in the play to figure out yeah. what's going to, you know, right. lead to the best result. Yeah, he's not making the best decisions, mm-hmm. I guess you'd say. He's, I mean, the good thing is he's not getting beat, Yeah, which is what you – you know, when you start seeing that, you know, you're like, it's kind of hard to... Can't beat that. Can't teach that, yeah. you know. All the rest of the stuff he can be taught. Uh, the 73, I really like him. Uh, Walton? Yes, the left tackle. Uh, just from the little bit I've seen in All-22, I haven't looked at the last game. But uh, he's got a unique style about him. He's very, He's got very fast feet. You know, he shuffles his feet a lot. All I can think of is maniac, maniac. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, but, I mean, he, he sets them well, but he keeps them moving, almost like a, a quarterback, you know, how they'll, mm. they'll bounce on their feet. So he's, he, he, he doesn't, usually with the, the tackles, you'll see them set their feet. I mean, you know, they'll try to be a little light on it, but not 
You know, they're not tapping yeah. their feet up and down. Uh, he does, and he's, he's very quick with his movement. He can change direction real fast. I liked him, uh, just from what I've seen. I think he's the one that got that Tom Brady run called back. Yeah, yeah, he he was For got he had a few holding he penalties had a and uh, made a few mistakes here and there. But I I like him. I'm I'm not uh, upset about our offensive line at all. Interesting. Wish their their run blocking would get a little bit better, but I think it'll come. Yeah, they just got to learn to work together. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the whole key with run blocking. Again, and it's like with Gedeke, how he's not making the best. Of, it's That's a lot of pressure. You have to block for Tom Brady. Yeah. And I think I understand the philosophy of the next man up. They want, you know, they're not going to tailor their play calling because you don't know what you're doing yet. I can understand the merit in that, but... In theory, but in practice, I think with a guy like Gedeke, rookie, mm. never played an NFL game right. before, you're throwing him in there. Yeah, uh, you need to set him up to succeed. Yes, and and they're not doing that. They're they're put plugging him in, just, just like with the wide receivers. You know, it's like here's our game plan. You got to learn that. They're not going to tailor it for you. Uh, and they're having Gedeke doing a lot of movement. You know, I mean, he's doing a lot of pulling and crossing. And he's, you know, going out for screens. You know, it's, it's like that's a lot to put on a rookie, mm-hmm. you know, who wasn't planning on starting. Mm-hmm. You know, he's only in there because of injury. So, I mean, he had a few weeks in training camp to kind of prepare, but yeah. that doesn't. I mean, that's not enough to get you acclimated to the NFL, to an NFL game at full speed. Yes. Although he's been the only offensive lineman I've seen. But like I said, I haven't seen all the 22. The all, all of the all 22. Uh, I'm hopefully going to catch up on it some today. But uh, he's the only one I've seen that's got a pancake in yet. So. <laughs> yeah, I was Love happy about that. Yeah, he, he, uh, he, was, he was helping block on, with... Uh, 73, and he clobbered the guy, took him off his feet, and the guy went on the ground, and Gedeke, you just see he got all excited and ran <laughs> over, jumped right on top of him, pancaked him. So that was fun. Uh, some of the other notes on the All-22 that I've gotten is uh, Barrett was playing in week two. He, he, like I said, he was playing on the right side of the line, but they switched it this week with the Packers. Had Tryon on the right side and Barrett on the left, so I don't I don't know what they're doing there if they're just trying stuff out or whatever. But it's a uh, it's strange to me. I thought he was going to be predominantly on the right. Oh, so they're not doing it. They didn't do it against the Packers. They had Barrett a lot on the left, so don't know about all that. Uh, Forty one Keith Cole Keith. He, that, that's how you know this is. Byron Leftwich's and Tom Brady's offense. This is not Bruce Arians because Coquive is a fullback. They're using him as a fullback. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, Bruce Arians hates fullbacks. Yeah. He said he would never have one of them. I don't even know. I think they have Keith lifted, yeah. listed as a tight end. Yeah, I think that's probably the only way they could get B.A. on board with drafting him to yeah. begin with. They're calling him a tight end. Yeah, but it's fun. It's fun. I, I like pure blockers. And uh, he is a pure blocker. I don't think they've thrown at the ball once yet. But uh, every time you see him out there, you know he's going to be blocking somebody. Yeah. And it's, it's just fun watching him, you know. Uh, he had a good tackle on special teams, too. Oh, remember 29, uh, 22 had that tackle. Yes. Um, Neil, Neil, right? yes. Yeah. He had great. some good plays. Yes, oh, I yeah. Like Very impressive, yeah. Neil. Yeah, I like him. And uh, who's the other one? We got um, not Logan Hall, Logan uh, Ryan. Logan Ryan, yes, both of them. Great. The Logans, the I gotta Logan. get them correct in my brain. Logans runs, yes, <laughs> yeah. They, they those two additions have been great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pretty happy with the defense, special teams. Yeah. So when you were talking about our field position, is that that they had good returns or? Were we yeah. just not punting that far? Well, it's a number of things. One, uh, Jalen Darden just does not return the ball well. He goes laterally, he goes which laterally. just is so infuriating to me. He doesn't. He you doesn't run. Like, you run ten yards and you only get three. 
Yes. It was the one he ran all the way across the field, mm -hmm. and he I think he got 10 yards out of it. Mm -hmm. And he was the field, like 50 yards. <laughs> so he was... And uh, he, he doesn't seem to like contact. Mm -mm. Uh, and he uh, immediately goes for the out of bounds every single time. And Josh McCurdy. Again, he's a speed guy, mm -hmm. but he's not using his speed. No, no, no. And we're not blocking off the punt. You know, talking about punts here. Uh, you know, we're not stopping the gunners good enough. And there was a couple times I saw where we had. Our guys, they weren't trying to block the punt, but there was five of them standing there. They had missed their blocks. <laughs> and so there was a line of five Buccaneers standing there around the punter. Oh, and, my. you know, all the guys they were supposed to be blocking were down the field. So, you know, we're just not, we're not getting those blocks in to give Darden or whoever's going to be returning just a little bit of a chance. You know, just... Let them get five or ten yards. You know, I mean, almost all the punts were were uh, <clears throat> fair catches. Okay. You know, because it, as soon as he get the ball, there was two yeah. or three Packers standing right in their face. You know, uh, so you know we just we just got to do a better job of blocking. But they did get quite a few where they you know got them, dropped them into the in the ten yard line and, and beyond. That that one where it landed right on the one, and then they stopped it. And we ended up getting it on the two. You know, not a whole lot you can do there. Yeah. Except, you know, stop them from getting down there. You know, let the ball go in the end zone. You don't yeah. want them to be down there to catch the ball. So, again, it's just, you know, I was excited about our special teams in the first game. Not so much in this game. <laughs> Although I do love our punter. Our punter's boom. It's Camarda. Yeah. Um Putters are a weird thing in the NFL. Like it seems like they have a lot of success early, and then um, teams kind of run out of tolerance. Like if you have a slump, like Bradley Pinion, for instance, last yeah. year. Like, I mean, he was great the first few years, and then last year he mm -hmm. had those two fatal kickoffs. You know that he went out of bounds, so they get on the forty, and it seemed like that sealed his fate. Uh, there's just not a lot of tolerance with kickers and punters yeah. for them to miss or screw up. Yeah, it's a weird thing in the league how it's just so teams are just so quick to just get rid of them. Yeah, and then pick up one that the team got rid of. Yeah, that it's, lost them the game, <laughs> a like weird, a big so game. I, I think it's that they just think it's change of scenery. Yeah, it's just change scenery. Maybe he'll work here. That guy will work there. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So, <coughs> I do feel that uh, our field position, the field position game, was what killed us in this game. Mm. You know, now all the other stuff, yes, it could have been better. Receivers yeah. could have been better. Uh, fewer penalties, uh, less turnovers on our part. But uh, all that aside, I think it was field position that really. Was the nail on the yeah, conference. I mean, we were pretty pretty evenly matched between the two teams. I mean, <clears throat> besides third down, Come third down was terrible. Down. Uh, yardage though, total plays, we were very similar. Yards per play, they were averaging five point two, we had four point eight. Uh, passing almost identical, they had two forty eight, we had two fifty one. Um, that we both had two turnovers. Time of possession. Uh, was pretty lopsided in their favor. Seven uh, minutes, yeah. That's seven a huge minutes, difference. yeah. But still, they didn't put up any points in that no. time. No, it was weird. A lot of it was just what what we've seen the past few years. This is quick, short passes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they stuck to the run game even though it wasn't working too good for them. Uh, you know, they were just running, keeping keeping possession, moving slowly down the field, and uh, uh, running the clock. Yeah. You know, because the best way to beat Tom Brady is keep yeah. him off the field. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I know. You saw it at the end there in the third and fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Like, they had – did we have – we had three points at that point. And, uh, you know, it was just – we weren't that far behind. No. So, we got the field goal, and there were only eight points. So, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And then they get the ball. We get the ball back, and 
we convert to a touchdown and we're there. We're right so, there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's smart. It, it, it was weird on that two point conversion. Uh, you kind of felt like, but and again, it might have been me projecting because I was so damn tired. <laughs> I, I felt like Brady was just like, screw it, I'm ready to go home. Yeah. You know, it didn't seem. Well, I that's know. how I felt with that play where he ran and messed up his brace because that was second down. Or it was, was it third down, and then they called it back, and then we had one more snap, and he just threw it into the dirt, mm -hmm. and it was a turnover on, and you're like, or it, it was a punt, and it was just so weird. You're like, that was kind of a wasted yeah, drive. You kind of you, you know? kind of felt like they almost, I wouldn't say gave up, but they felt like, look, we just. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is playing too good. He's being too accurate. Uh, they've got a better game plan than we expected. Uh, we can't get our players to fit our game plan. Uh, we're down a lot of elite people. Mm -hmm. But one thing they did really good on offense is they kept the ball away from uh, Devin White. Really? Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't, no matter where he was yes. at, they kept it. They, you know, they, Interesting. Yeah, I mean, he only had five total tackles. <laughs> what? Yeah, three solo. Two. I mean, they kept the ball away from him because he's been yeah. on fire this year. Yeah. Uh, and they, Interesting. you know, anytime he came in for a blitz or anything, they just got the ball away right away. It was like they were focused on Devin White, just keep huh. the ball wherever he's not. Interesting. Yeah. So, boy, that was smart game plan on their point, yeah. I thought. Uh, well, it's nice that we have such an impactful player. Yeah. You got a game plan around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Winfield was our no no uh, Edwards was our highest tackler. Oh. In there. And Winfield had six solo tackles, which I did, I don't remember. During the name. game, Ralph was like, "Have you seen Winfield?" Yeah, well, they had him in a lot in coverage, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd see him on the field, but he just wasn't making yeah, any was plays, playing. which is unusual for him. Right. It's, yeah. So uh, they did a really good job of just avoiding our playmakers. You know, and get the ball out quick. You know, Aaron Rodgers is just... He's so smart. I mean, mm -hmm. he's one of the last field generals mm -hmm. in the NFL, and he's so experienced. And to him, it is a chess match. Yeah. You know, you hear football often described as that, but I would say he's one of those, along with Tom Brady, it's a chess match on either side. Mm -hmm. And he's such a smart player. He's been in the league for so long. Um so you kind of expect that kind of stuff from him. Yes, and he's extremely accurate. He's probably the most accurate quarterback in the league. Uh, some of those passes he made, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, well, there was one, Jamal Dean was just draped on the receiver, and uh, Aaron Rodgers threw it as the guy was running, and Jamel Dean was right right there, and it, it, it just went right past Jamel Dean's hands, right into the receiver's hands, mm. in perfect stride. It was like a 15-yard pass. I was just like, man, that there's no way you could stop that. No. There was nothing anybody no. could have done there. And he had, he had quite a few of those. Yeah. Uh, he was he was more accurate than Brady was. Brady had a, a mm. few passes in this game. I was like, oh, man, you know, his finger was probably hurting him or whatever, but... Yeah. Uh, it just, you know, but but even still, we were right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were you know, just five yards yeah, away. Yeah, it was so, it even, it, it felt very lopsided during the game, but at the end of it, it was, you know, it was a toss-up. It could have mm -hmm. gone either way. Yeah. We were this close to overtime. Yeah, I wasn't upset about it at all. No, you know, no. You know, I I, I would have liked to have seen more effort, especially on the wide receivers' parts. And it was just, it was just them. They just need to be more physical, mm -hmm. you know. And it's just not going to happen with that group. Uh, you know, they they're speedy guys, mm -hmm. more graceful, whatever. Uh, and our offense isn't really set up for that. Yeah. Uh, so it's just not going to happen, you know, until we get at least one guy back, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones. You know, we're going to have a struggle mm -hmm. with our wide receivers in that aspect. Um, I keep seeing people angry on Twitter about the play calling again, which is just like a broken record every year, every year. 
people blame the play calling. They're talking about the runs, how, you know, someone even broke down, like we're calling this many runs on first down and mm-hmm. it's so predictable and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know that Tom Brady picks when we run, right? <laughs> Be mad at Tom it's Brady. The, I know it's not the play calling; it's the play execution. Yeah, it's very silly. And and like I said, you know our our uh, our play calling is not <clears throat> exciting, and mm-hmm. it's it, it's very uninspiring to be honest with you. Yeah, you know it's the same way it was at at, at New England. Yeah, uh, you know you we watch New England Patriots games with Belichick. It's a very uninspiring mm-hmm. offense, but he'll throw in three, four plays a game that are unique and interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tricky. Uh, yeah. And, and we're not really doing that. It mm-hmm. seems like we're doing a couple. Well, like we had one, we were going to do the <sighs> reverse the end, end around, around and freaking flicker. Scotty Miller yeah. bungle. Like, okay, so you can't catch the ball in, in open field or whatever. You know, a little toss. You can't do a toss. Can't, or was it a handoff? You can't catch the ball from you can't, two I yards away when somebody I'm tosses sorry. it to you. Uh, I'm, I I do think it's a mental thing for him. Yeah. I think he's in his own head. Well, he's been in the league too long for that. He's yeah. Not, he's not a rookie anymore. 100%. Oh, guys, real quick. Uh, let, let us know about the audio on this, uh, especially you who are listening to the podcast and not watching it uh, let us know how the audio is we got a weird hookup here so that's stuff we've never tried before i've actually got it on a stereo microphone uh, to get a little bit of a better sound uh, let us know about that if you get a chance though if it's horrible let us know if, it, if it's okay don't say anything i guess <laughs> <laughs> or you can if you want to but, uh, let us know yeah so uh, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs coming up. Uh, there, it looks like they're not hitting on all cylinders either. Mm. Uh, I think we're both two and one. So it's going to be an interesting game. It's 8 o'clock, right? Primetime game. Yeah, primetime game. Super Bowl rematch. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Shaq Barrett was on there talking about how he thinks they, they're still going to beat that offensive line. He's like, they might have changed, but they haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, JPP signed with the Ravens. Ah, uh, this yeah. makes me so upset because we play them in the next few weeks. I can't remember what game it is, but uh, so we will see him soon. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he played last week. If he got any snaps with him, he signed late in the week. But he, um, you know, he's at the Ravens now, and yeah, that's sad. Mm-hmm. But. What can you do? Yeah. What can you do? It's it's so strange to me that Sue hasn't gone with anybody. I know. I guess he's just asking for too much money. Don't know. But, I mean, he's he's an elite football player. And, yeah. and still had plenty of football in him. I can't believe we didn't sign him after Akeem Hicks got hurt. We got money. I, there's something there. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why we don't want him on the team anymore. But I mean, he seemed to get along. He seemed to be a good teammate. Yeah. Yeah. So. I I sure enjoyed watching him play. Uh, Logan Hall had a sack. Yeah. Uh, had a good spin move. I really enjoyed that. Uh, you know, I haven't seen him do much of anything. He's getting about 20, 30 percent of the snaps out there. So you know, he's getting some time in. Uh, but <clears throat> I haven't seen anything that's impressed me. But that was a nice one. He got a little spin move and. Uh, spun right into Aaron Rodgers, which Aaron Rodgers is kind of hard to sack. Yeah, because you know, he'll get the ball off. And, and he's 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 quick. Yeah, he, he's he'll shifted. run too. Yeah, I mean he's he's not a runner quarterback, but he mm-hmm. will get get away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was nice to see Logan Hall step up and do some stuff though. Uh, we had Logan Ryan with the interception. That was awesome. Um, uh, Gage got that touchdown. That was a good catch. It's a good throw and a good catch. And Gage had, man, he had like twelve receptions or something. I mean, he he really stepped yeah. it up. If it wasn't for that, that damn fumble, yeah. he would have had a great game. Yeah. But and even Todd Bowles said in the press conference, he was like, uh, "That that that turnover wiped out everything he did good." Ooh. Yeah, Todd Bowles was a little vicious to the players. Really? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. 
He said when he said about the he, they were, they were going to have to bite the bullet and put in some of the <laughs> other running backs. I was like, oh yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah, Russell Gage. I was concerned after the turnover that mentally he was going to beat himself up about it. But then I thought after the turnover he really redeemed himself. Yeah, got that touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perriman had a turnover, and that's. You know, but again, like I said, it wasn't anything stupid on their fault. They just they, they got the ball punched out. That yeah. was good plays by the the Packers. Uh, let me see. We had uh, um, the interception, and do, do we have any fumbles recoveries? I know they had a fumble that they yeah, recovered. Yeah, um, Logan Ryan had a fumble recovery, and Cam Bray recovered one. Oh, that's right. That was the one where Scotty Miller fumbled it. Cameron Bray jumped um, on it. And this is saying that Bertha Perriman had two fumbles, but he lost. He only lost one. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, Perriman was pretty upset about his fumble. He was on the sideline or. Moping. Moby. Yeah. Uh, they had us backed up. That was, that was when we got it on the two-yard line and we punted it out. It was a great punt, first of all, but then the return killed us. But they had hit our punter, mm-hmm. which I thought was a BS officiating. The officiating in this game wasn't any good, uh, but it wasn't totally disastrous. Uh, but so then we got another punt, and – we punted, and it was a better punt that time, and it backed them up. It went from, you see, they returned the ball back. They got it around our 40 or 35, and then they ended up with the the big, the better punt, and then they got a penalty back-to-back uh, for blocking the back or holding, I can't remember, which backed them up some more. Mm-hmm. So it went from them being at the 40, our 40, or 35, to them being at their 30. Yeah. So it was, a, it was yeah. a total field flip there uh, by them making mistakes. And, and the refs helped them out on that or helped us out on that one because that, was, that should not have been a penalty against them for running in our kicker. He got thrown into the kicker. Yeah. Uh, but that's one of those screwed up ref calls that I'll be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it, it could go either way. Yeah, you never yeah. know. It helped us, so I'm not going to complain about it too much. <laughs> Uh, Donovan Smith was out, uh, Keem Hicks was out, Mike Evans was out, Julio Jones was out, Chris Godwin was out. So that's, that's so many a, of our heavy hitters. Yeah, that's quite a quite a few of our starters, man. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then we did this last week too. We were where we went for it on fourth and one early in the game, in kind of a precarious place. I was just like, whoa! Uh, we did it in our fir- on our first drive in this game. And we, we ended up getting it, but uh, and that was Cole Beasley's first catch, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought I thought it was Scotty Miller at first because they look alike. Yeah. And uh, he he like jumped out, caught it, and fell down, and everything. I was like, Scotty Miller, get up and run. <laughs> then I saw it was Cole Beasley. I was like, okay. Uh, so you know, I kind of kind of scares me with those uh, fourth and ones and you know, at midfield that. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't want us to get too cocky with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and now, it, but we're not doing the quarterback sneaks with Tom Brady. I know. Which is weird because he's like the best in the he's world. So at that. good at them. So good at it. Maybe he doesn't want to do them. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to get hit anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He took a couple shots during this game, and he was a little slow to get up. And I was like, man, he, you know, he, he's he's gaunt. He looks like he's lost weight. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he he seems to be more moody. Yeah. Serious. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, Giselle didn't come to the game. Oh, she hasn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, this was the she normally comes to the home game. Oh, gotcha. She didn't come come to this one. Uh, so there might be truth to those rumors. Something to it. The kids did show up though. So. Who knows? Who knows? Hopefully, she's not messing with his head. Come on, Giselle. Just wait a few more months. <laughs> Give us till February. <laughs> You can do it. All right, so we got the uh, Chiefs coming up. We're, we're hopefully going to have a preview for that. Uh, things are starting to calm down a little bit more here. Uh, we're getting getting more into a flow of things with the new house, new state, 
mm-hmm. new neighborhood and everything, new schools. Uh, so we're getting more stabilized. So hopefully we'll have a preview game. Uh, hopefully we won't have a whole lot to report. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Except that Mike Evans will be back. Uh, Julio <laughs> Jones could play. He could have played this Sunday, but they kept him out just for... Uh, He's old. <laughs> <laughs> we sure could have used him. Though, man. I know. That would have been a difference in the game. Uh, don't know about Donovan Smith, and we still don't know anything about Ryan Jensen. That is the weirdest it, thing it that they're not weird. saying. Like, what is the injury? Yeah, or, or when's his time taken? Yeah. Nothing. We're getting nothing. I it's, mean, is he getting an amputation or something? Like, what is happening? He's getting a robot knee. Yeah. And, and that's another thing, too. You haven't heard anything about SMB, Sean Murphy Bunting. You know, he didn't play a single snap on defense again. It's been three weeks in a row. He hasn't seen one single snap on defense. I think he played like 12 snaps on special teams. Mm. But that, why? What's going on with that? I mean, what what doghouse did he get into? Yeah. Because going into week one in the preseason, you know, it was a bad – he had the starting job. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they went, no, Jamel Dean's going to be the starter week one. and Which caught everyone off guard. Yes, and they have not played SMB at all, mm-hmm. and I don't know why. Not even, like, in rotation. No. No, we're playing all safeties. I mean, we've got, we've yeah. had five safeties out there. At what? Point. Yeah. <laughs> so, we really like our safeties. Apparently. Yeah. Well, Todd Bowles was a safety. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're we're playing safeties and coverage all the time, <laughs> lining up man coverage. It's weird. Todd Bowles is biased. He is a little bit, but it, it is just strange that uh, you know there's been no explanation as to why SMB has got no snaps, like you said, no no rotation, anything. You know, and I don't think it's injury. No, because you know, he's out there on special teams, some. Mm-hmm. You know, just they just decided to put Jamel Dean out there and let him play. I mean, he's playing 100% of the snaps. He's out there. It's him, Winfield, Levante David, uh, Devin White, uh, and Carlton Davis have all played 100% of the snaps. Mm, mm-hmm. so, That's crazy. Yeah. What is going on? Don't know. Has anybody asked Todd Balls about it? Not that I know of. It's the media. <laughs> You got more important things to worry about. I guess. All right, you got anything else? I do not. All right, guys, we will uh, we will try to have a preview thing and have our predictions out. Which is funny, watching that all twenty two. I was going to say I think the Packers are going to beat us just because uh, with watching all twenty two against the Saints, we really didn't do a whole lot. It was really the Saints screwing up. Mm-hmm. The Saints beat themselves. And when I say the Saints, I mean James Winston. We know what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, just, yeah, yeah. <sighs> he got those happy feet and just off target and bad decisions, you know. And we just we just capitalized on it. And and, and Dan Rogers doesn't do that. Mm-mm. You know, so I was like, you know, there's a good, good possibility we might lose this one. I am so glad we did not do a preview podcast because I would have been running my mouth about how we were going to kill them. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, but one of the things with our defense, with the interior, like we were talking about how they're rotating everything, we're just not getting that push up the middle yeah. at all. Uh, matter of fact, all, almost all the pressure we've gotten has come from uh, the safeties or uh, Devin White. You know, these these unusual angles and players shooting in. Because It's weird because Todd Bowles said, oh, we're trying to get more speed up the middle. Mm-hmm. How's that working out? Not working out too great. But, hey, you know, I'm, not, I'm not worried at all. We're, we're, we're a good team. We've got a bunch of good players. Yeah. Uh, we have changed a bit offensively. You know, we're going more towards the run, which it makes me thrilled to death. We're not getting the points on the board that we want to see and everything, but, you know, I think in, in a long season and, uh, you know, it just really helps our defense. I think it's one of the reasons why our defense is playing as good as it is because they're staying off the field. They weren't able to against the Packers. Uh, but, you know, being able to run that ball and run time off the clock 
helps our defense. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm excited about that. And, and we're going to start seeing bust out plays. Leonard Fournette's going to pop off some big ones. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to happen mm-hmm. if they don't get called back on penalties. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I do feel like the offense, they're not quite cohesive yet. Mm-hmm. But they will be. Yes, yes. I think there's. And, we need some time to build a little bit of chemistry. Right. And, you know, we played teams that are pretty good at stopping the run. Uh, you know, we're eventually going to hit some of these teams that are mediocre or, or not good at stopping the run. Yeah. And we're going to plow right over them. So yeah. uh, that's going to be exciting. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us, I think. Anything else? I'm good. All right, guys. Till next time. Go Bucks.